In this video, you're going to learn about composition of functions. So what exactly does that mean, a composition of functions? Well, basically what it is, is you're putting one function into another function. Or another way to think about it is, you're doing a set of operations, and that answer then becomes the input in the next function, and then you do a set of operations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the notation, it's sometimes written like this, f of g of x, or this is the notation that I prefer, f of g of x, because it's a little bit more intuitive. You're starting on the inside, just like you do with the order of operations with parentheses, and then you're working your way out. It's oftentimes pronounced like this, f composed with g, or f of g of x. So we're gonna go through four uh, comprehensive examples, and you'll get a feel for how this works. So say, for example, our two functions are f of x equals 2x minus 3, and g of x equals 1 over x squared. And we wanna calculate what's f of g of 2. So starting on the inside and working our way out, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna to go to our g function, Whatever's in parentheses, that goes in for x on the right. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting 2 in place of x. So that's going to be 1 over 2 squared, which comes out to 1 fourth. Now that 1 fourth, which was the output of the g function, now becomes the input into our f function. So we're going to put 1 fourth in for x, and whatever is here is going to go in place of x on the right. So this is going to be 2 times, instead of x, we're putting what x equals, 1 fourth minus 3. This is 2 fourths, which is 1 half, so 1 half minus 3 is negative 2 and a half, and that's your answer. Now, you can see here we had to do this in a couple of steps. First we put 2 in for x in our g function, that answer then became our input in our f function. But what if we want to find a new function, like the composition of the functions, that does this whole thing in one step instead of having to do a couple of steps like we did here. Well, that's what this notation is showing us, f of g of x. So we're going to take g of x, which is this quantity right here, so that's 1 over x squared, and now 1 over x squared is going into our f function. So whatever's in parentheses goes in for x on the right, so this is going to equal 2 times 1 over x squared minus 3. Now before I simplify, I oftentimes like to look at the domain. So when I look at this, I say, well, hmm, I can see that I cannot divide by 0, right? That's undefined. So when I look at our domain here, looking at the number line, here's 0. Can't be 0, but it can be all these numbers, all these numbers. So I would say the domain is from negative infinity to 0, not including 0, and then from 0 to positive infinity. But then I would go ahead and simplify this. 2 is like 2 over 1, so we're multiplying numerators and denominators together. So 2 times 1 is 2, 1 times x squared is x squared minus 3. And you could stop here, or if you want to get a common denominator, you could uh, do that as well. But check this out. If I take 2 now, and I put it in for x, 2 squared is 4, 2 over 4 is 1 half, 1 half minus 3 is negative 2 and a half. So what this function does is it does it all in one step and having to, instead of having to do multiple steps like we did here. Now what happens if we want to compose them in the opposite direction, g of f of x? See here we're putting the f function into our g function, okay? So what is f of x? It's 2x minus 3. So now the 2x minus 3 becomes our input here for x. So that's going to equal 1 over, instead of x, I'm putting this quantity. This is our new input, and we're squaring it. Now you could leave it like this, or you could foil out the 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. But for right now, I'll just leave it like that. And then for letter D, how would we find out what f of f of x is? Well, here what we're doing is we're putting the f function back into itself. So I like to do this in steps, f of x is equal to 2x minus 3, and then remember the way functions work, whatever's in parentheses, that goes in place of x here on the right, right? So what happens is we're going to say 2 times 2x minus 3 minus 3. And now if we simplify by distributing, we get 4x minus 6 minus 3 which is 4x minus 9, 
and that's f of f of x. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number two, we have two new functions here, h of x equals x plus one, and l of x equals the square root of two x. So let's start off by calculating what's h of l of eight. Now some students mistakenly see this little tiny circle here, and it, it kind of looks like a little dot, like a multiplication symbol, but it's not multiplication. It's actually saying what's h of l of eight. So I'm changing from this notation to this notation, also, sometimes people think it's like the letter O, like what's fog? Somebody will say, what's fog, right? But uh, so L of eight, so you'd say, okay, starting on the inside, which is a little confusing because sometimes students think, oh, I'm, I'm working actually from right to left. We're used to reading from left to right. But that's why I like to write it this way because you're working from the inside out. So starting with our L function, we're saying whatever is here goes in for X on the right. So that means this is two times eight. This is the square root of 16. Square root of 16 we know is four. So that answer now goes into our h function. So whatever's here goes in for x on the right. So that's gonna be four plus one, which we know is five, and you got it. Now, let's take a look at letter B. What's h of l of x? See here, they don't really tell us what x is. X could be eight like it was here, or 10, or two. You know, we don't know. We're writing like a generic uh, function for the composition of h of L of X. So how do we do this? Well, I would start by rewriting this H of L of X. Then I would say, okay, my L function is the square root of two X. So let's replace L of X with what it equals. Now the way functions work is whatever's in parentheses, that goes in for X on the right. So that means I'm gonna be replacing X with square root of two X plus one. Now sometimes students think, well, what happened to this X right here? Does it get multiplied by this? No, what it does is it gets replaced by the square root of two x. So this becomes whatever's in here, like say this was cat, that would go in here, it'd be cat plus one. You know, so you're actually replacing that x with whatever's in the parentheses. Okay, so now before we simplify, which there's really not much to simplify here, I like to kind of analyze what's the domain. Well, I know I can't take the square root of the negative number, so that means that whatever's in underneath the square root here has to be greater than or equal to zero. If I divide both sides by two, x has to be greater than or equal to zero, or you could say from zero to infinity in your interval notation, but this would be the answer. Now, notice again here, if I was to take eight and I put eight in here, two times eight is 16, square root of 16 is four, plus one is five. See, same thing we got here, it's just that this does it all in one equation instead of having to do two separate steps. So that's the composition. And you can compose two functions, three functions, four functions, you know, ad infinitum, right, For, forever. Let's look at letter C here. We've got L of H of X. So here we switched it. We've actually have our H function that's going into our L function, right? So what's H of X? That's equal to X plus one. And remember, whatever's in parentheses, that's going in place of x on the right, in place of, that's the key, right? So this is the square root of two times the quantity x plus one. Now before I simplify, I like to analyze to see if there's any restrictions. And I can see that I can't take the square root of a negative number. So I would take whatever's underneath this uh, radical here, which is uh, two times x plus one, and it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I have, 2x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. And let me just write this over here so we have a little bit more space. So then we have 2x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And if I divide both sides by 2, x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we can say our domain is from negative 1 to infinity. But I would go ahead and simplify this. This is just the square root of 2x plus 2. And that's our composition of L of h of x. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, for example number three, we're given a couple of graphs here, and this is the graph of our f of x function. This is our graph here of our g of x function, and we wanna find out what's f of g of two and what's g of f of negative one. So a little bit different kind of problem here because we don't have the equation, just the graph. So again, starting from the inside, g of two, that tells us we go to our g function, that's this guy here, Whatever's in the parentheses, that's our x coordinate, our x value, our input. So we say when x is two, we go up to the graph, oh, 
our y value is 2. Okay, now we say that f of 2, we go to our f function, when x is 2, we go to the graph, our y value is negative 1. So it's a couple of steps. Starting on the inside, this is your x value, but g of x represents the y value. Then that y value, that output, becomes the input in our f function. This is our x coordinate. We go to the graph and the output is the y coordinate. And you got it. So two steps. So let's try letter B now. G of f of negative 1. Now I would rewrite this a little bit. I prefer this notation, g of f of negative 1. Starting on the inside, we go to our f function, which is this guy over here. When x is negative 1, that's right here, we go up to the graph. Oh, our y value is positive 1. Now we go to our g function. When x is 1, see our input is 1, we go up to the graph, our y value is also 1. And you got it. Let's take a look at one last example. Okay, see if you can pause the video and try example number 4 here. We've got two new functions, f of x equals x squared and g of x equals the square root of x minus 1. How would you calculate f of g of 5? See if you can do that one. Well, if I was going to do it, I'd start on the inside, and I'd say, let me go to my g function. Whatever's here is going to go in place of x on the right. 5 minus 1 is 4. <clears throat> the square root of 4 is 2. So now we just have to calculate what's f of 2. So we go over to our f function. Whatever's in parentheses goes in place of x on the right. So that's going to be equal to 2 squared, which is 4. And you got that one. So for part b, what is f of g of x, and what is the domain? Well, how would you do that one? Now this one, I would rewrite it a little bit, f of g of x. This tells me I'm putting my g function into my f function. g of x is equal to the square root of x minus 1. So the square root of x minus 1 is going to be my input here for x on the right. So this is going to equal x square root of x minus 1 squared. Now before you simplify this, it's good to look at the domain because if I was just to square this, the square and the square root are going to cancel and we're just going to get x minus 1 and it looks like the domain could be all real numbers. But before we simplify, we notice that we have a square root here. We can't take the square root of a negative number, so whatever's underneath that square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. If we add 1 to both sides, x is greater than or equal to 1. So we would say our domain is from 1 to infinity. So just remember, before you simplify, just kind of take a look and say, you know, are there any restrictions? Like am I dividing by 0 or am I taking the square root of a negative number? Those are what you want to look out for. And then for letter C, we're doing the reverse, g of f of x. So how would you calculate what that is and how would you uh, state the domain? Well, if I was going to do this one, I would rewrite it in this notation, that tells me I'm putting my f of x function into my g function. f of x is equal to x squared. So now we go to our g function, whatever's in parentheses goes in place of x on the right. And so that's going to be uh, the square root of x squared minus 1. Now we really can't simplify that any further, so that's going to be our answer. But what's the domain? Well. This one's a little bit trickier. Now, whatever's underneath the square root, we said it has to be uh, 0 or positive. So x squared minus 1 has to be greater than or equal to 0. We can factor this as a sum and difference pattern, like a difference of two squares. We can go to our number line, set these factors to 0. We're going to get negative 1 and 1. So it can equal negative 1, that would be 0. It can equal positive 1, that's 0. But if we do some uh, test points in these intervals, let's say negative 2, that would give you negative, negative, so negative times a negative is a positive. If we do zero, that's a positive times a negative, which is a negative. If we do two, we get a positive times a positive, which is a positive. We want it to be where it's greater than or equal to zero, meaning where it's positive. And so if we write this in interval notation, you can see it's from negative infinity to negative one, union from one to positive infinity. That's going to be your domain. So. Great job if you're able to follow these uh, problems in this video. If you want some more examples, follow me over to a previous video I did talking about composition of functions right there. I'll see you over in that video.